Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy most high, holy, and exalted name. We are believing children, we are under this canvas cathedral again this evening. And we thank you for the privilege of one us to worship you under peaceful conditions. Amen. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy, for food, clothing, and shelter. We thank you most of all for salvation given to us freely through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We do ask for forgiveness of sins, for washing and cleansing from all unrighteousness now through the blood of Jesus. We ask again this evening as we open your word, we open our minds, open our understanding. As we treat our God with another link in the grand and golden chain of salvation. You have brought your people here tonight. We are here just over one week now preaching this, your everlasting gospel. And you have brought your people here again tonight. And Lord Jesus, you told us we should go and preach and teach. And that we should baptize. And that we should do so in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. O oh God, you said that he that believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. And so we understand that you have called us this evening to believe. And as your word therefore is proclaimed, we ask that your Holy Spirit would do the work that he alone can do in leading your people into an experience of trusting and believing. That he would move up and down the aisle, in between the chairs, bringing conviction and conversion. So as the call goes out again this evening, for those who love you and for those who have decided to follow you all the way even into the water grave of baptism, your people whom you have brought here would make that move and come publicly declaring their decision to follow Jesus. We believe that you are in the business of saving. And so we wait on you to do that which you alone can do this evening, Heavenly Father. Holy Ghost, we ask that you would be back the powers of darkness, confuse the plans of the enemy, that you would wrestle and fight on behalf of your people against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We ask that you will pull down every demonic stronghold, every thought that seeks to uh, lift its ugly head against Jesus would be brought down tonight. And Jesus Christ would stand alone as Lord. And so we thank you. Help us to be willing to learn and willing to obey. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. settled as we go into the study of God's word. Weed is my best friend. Weed is my best Spliff. 
What other names you have? And perhaps other names that are out there has become household words. Those names have become household names. And being has become a household product. Weed has become popular in our world this evening. Weed is consumed by medical doctors. Weed is consumed by university professors. Weed is consumed by politicians. Weed is consumed by teachers, fathers, mothers, children. Weed has become extremely popular. And throughout the world, they are the criminalizing the use of weed. And for many of us, our homes, our communities, our environments have changed. And in some places, the smell of weed is so strong that they have to lodge complaints to the authorities. Because it seems as though everybody smoking weed. You can hardly walk through your streets and not get the scent of weed. Right here in the park behind us, folk go out, bring their children, they take a little swing, a little run around, and somebody goes there and lights up a spliff. Alright? We get it coming through. We have gotten it here, that's all. Yes. It's, it's popular. And I sometimes heard a, a dancehall, Jamaican dancehall artist. His proper name is Andre Sarlan. His stage name is either Popcane or Popcorn or Popcan. Which one is it? Which one is it? Pop what? Popcorn. You sure you popcorn? Yeah. So his stage name is Popcorn, the young people are saying. His stage name is Popcorn. Andre Sutherland, a Jamaican dancehall artist, produced the song by the name of my servant, Weed is my best friend. It became a popular song, Weed is my best friend and, and, and some of the, the lyrics in essence what what uh, Andre Sutherland popcorn uh, said in that song in essence was uh, that he has come to the place where he cannot trust and be friends with human beings uh, and so he has decided to make weed his best friend I repeat what he said in essence the song is that he can't trust human beings, but he can trust weed, and so weed is his best friend. I'm sure he's not alone for millions in our world tonight. Weed is their best friend. They get up before breakfast, it's weed. Before lunch, it's weed. Before dinner, it's weed. Before we tire to bed, it's weed. Weed is their best friend. 
This is what Popcorn said. What he did not say, I said what he did not say is that weed is a drug. He did not say that weed is an addictive drug. He did not say that weed contains a substance with a long name. Yeah. A psychoactive substance by the name of tetra hydro cannabinol. A big name. tetra hydro cannabinol. That's why they call it for short cannabis. That's where they get cannabis from. That long word. tetra hydro cannabinol. A chemical that alters the mind. I say a chemical that alters the brain. A chemical that negatively affects the frontal lobe of the brain. Popcorn did not mention that in the song. Popcorn did not mention that weed is an addictive drug. He did not mention that weed interferes with short-term memory. If ever you are close to heavy weed smokers, you will recognize they have problem with memory. You would recognize they tend to forget easily because weed destroys the mind, negatively affects short-term memory. He did not mention that that weed causes one to hallucinate and therefore negatively affects one's judgment. Are you with me this evening? Popcorn didn't say that in the song. He didn't tell men weed lowers your sperm count. Those of us who live around weed smokers, I grew up among many of them, and I can tell you when I read that and I, I, I surveyed my community and the young men, I came to uh, agree with that which I read because as I looked at them, I recognized most of them had no children, had women but no children. Weed lowers your sperm count. And if your sperm count is very low, then you will not be able to. You will not be able to impregnate anybody. You wouldn't have children. He did not say that. He did not say in the song that weed is a gateway drug. A gateway drug. In other words, uh, weed is a drug, the experts tell us, of such that after a while, the user wants something more. It's a gateway drug. So it, it's like uh, uh, it's like the beginning, like the platform for something stronger. After a while, you want something stronger. You start with a five piece and after a while you want a ten piece. Uh, I don't know what what comes after that. I lost such piece, you know. A twenty piece, okay. And I imagine a thirty piece. And maybe a forty piece, I don't know. But it's a gateway drug. It leads from one kind of drug use into another. Popcorn did not tell us that. Not only that, but Popcorn did not tell us what is happening and has always been happening is that those who, who traffic in weed, they mix other substances with the weed. What's the term you for that? Black. <laughs> what? Black cigarette. Okay, well, I think it's 
what you said all the time. That they, that they lace it, right? I think it's lace, is it? They mix all that substances, cocaine, heroin, ecstasy, other things there. So when you think that you are only smoking weed, that you claim to be the thing that is for the healing of the nation, and you think that you are smoking that pure thing you say is for the healing of the nation, what in essence is happening is that you are frying your brain. And that's why you, you are seeing an increase of young men and women uh, with mental disorders today. Are you listening to me? If I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. We don't have to be university professors uh, to see that. We look around us and we see there is an increase uh, of young men and young women with mental disorders. Mental illness is on the rise. More and more young people are going mad. They are losing their minds. Because they think that they are just smoking weed. But in essence, they are smoking many other things. Popcorn didn't tell us that. I know some stories, and I'm sure you too know some stories of young persons after using weed saw things that were not there. Saw things which were not there. And those of us who used it, no matter I told you, I'm not preaching down to anybody here. No? I'm not preaching down to anyone here. Amen? Amen. I'm one sick person in the hospital telling others of Dr. Jesus. Amen? Amen. Uh, so I didn't fall from heaven. I told you before I came from all that kind of family. And so from my experience many 40 plus years ago, I know from my experience that when you smoke and you get high, you see and hear all kinds of things. Sometimes you feel ants running all over you and you're beating up yourself and all kinds of stuff. Because it causes you to do what? Hallucinate. It causes you to hallucinate. And if there's anybody here tonight who's smoking and you're honest, you will agree with the preacher, it causes you to hallucinate. That's why even in religions, I said that's why even in religions, in worship services, worship experiences, devotees are using weed. And they are hallucinating and claiming to be having encounters with God. When in essence what they are doing is hallucinating. Because of that chemical inside there that alters the mind. Tonight God has sent me by here to let you know in this great controversy for your soul, the battle is centered on your mind. I want to say that again tonight. In the battle good against evil, light against darkness, truth against error, Jesus against the devil, our minds is that central stage. You see, the devil knows our God, our Creator. He communicates with us through our minds. Amen. The devil knows that our Creator wants to have a relationship, a meaningful relationship with us, and to have meaningful communication with us, to communicate truth to us, and that he does so through the Holy Ghost as the Holy Ghost speaks to our mind. The devil knows that our Creator wants us to have a sober mind, wants us to have a sound mind. And so the devil has been doing everything and anything to destroy our minds. When you lose your mind, you are beyond the reach of God. 
to take it all from you, lose your mind, and you are wondering like a lunatic, no not the last night or day, the devil knows that he would have destroyed you. You can lose a leg and you can still have meaningful communication with God. You can lose an eye and still have meaningful communication with God. But when you lose your mind, somebody said the mind is what? A terrible thing to what? Waste. That's why the devil is destroying minds, not just with weed, but with drugs. I said with drugs. Because God wants us to remember, he wants us to know, if we don't know, that our bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost. I just said that God wants to communicate with us. And therefore the Holy Ghost wants to dwell with us and to communicate with us. And therefore God expects us to take care of our bodies and to guard our minds. I say guard our what? Our minds. Because garbage into the mind is garbage out of the mind. I say we need to guard our minds. Bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost. Let me begin that picture. Let's go to the Word of God. I'm at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And I read verses 19 and 20. Our bodies are, Paul is asking, what? Knowing not that your body is what? The temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are what? Not your own for your what? Born with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. You are born with a what? What price? What price? What price? First Peter chapter 1 verses 18 and 19. Paul says that we are born with a price. What price was paid for our redemption? What price was paid for our ransom? What price? The word said what? For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with what? Come on, we're going to preach this evening with corruptible things as what? Silver and gold. You were not redeemed. You were not bought. You were not redeemed. You were not what? Bought with corruptible things. Things that are here today and gone tomorrow as what? Silver and gold from your vain lifestyle or conversation received by tradition from your father's policy. But in what? Come on, talk to the preacher. But in what? With the precious, precious what? Precious what? Precious blood of who? Of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Paul is saying that the Christian you are born with the blood of Jesus. Jesus the Son right as says, pay it all, all to him. I owe sin that left a crimson stain. But hallelujah, the blood of Jesus has washed it all into white as snow. I'm bought with the blood. I'm bought with the blood. A high price was paid for my redemption. A high price was paid for my salvation. I'm special. I'm a value. I'm saying I'm special. I'm a value. I've been bought with the blood. With the blood. With the blood. Well, I'm not putting anything and anything into my body because I'm special. Bought with the blood of Jesus. Amen. First Corinthians 3 16 and 17. God says that He's angry with those of us who destroy our bodies. 
knowing that that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man, if any man, if any man defile, if any man destroy uh, what the temple of God, him shall God do what? Him shall God destroy for the temple of God is what? Holy which temple he, he are. Amen. God is serious about how we live. He's concerned about how we treat our bodies. Amen. I said we send a message to the world as Christians the way we live and the way we treat our bodies. God says if we destroy our bodies then surely he shall destroy us. If our minds are altered, if we have lost our minds and we can't continue with God, then Red, when it giveth his what? Color in the cup. 
when it what moves itself right at the last it what bite it as a serpent and stick it like a and now he's talking about that process of fermentation. I said he's talking about that process of what fermentation, the rotting of the fruit. I said the rotting of the fruit. That's why I tell you that the older the wine is, the what the sweet the sweet of the wine. That's all. That process of fermentation, that process of rotting, as against that which is pure, as against that which is fresh. Are you with me? And so he's talking about what happens when that which is pure and fresh becomes rotten away and it ferments and now it becomes dangerous. Are you with me? God is saying to his people tonight that we should stay away. Verse 29 Verse 29 they have what? Verse, 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 verse 35, what I'm asking for, sorry. Verse 35, it says what? In verse 35, they are what? Strip me, shall thou say. And I was not sick. They have what? Be me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will do what? Is he not describing the experience of an alcoholic? You bruise up and you don't know how you bruise up so. That's all? Because you fell down the night before. Hit up your head, bruise up your face. You get up next day and if they ask anything, you can't remember anything. But in that addictive state, what happens? You go again for what you call a revival. Do I know what I'm saying or not? I grew up with it and know it. He's describing an alcoholic. But you do not become an alcoholic overnight. It begins with one harmless drink. That's all? It begins with one harmless sip. Why are you boy crying so? Uh, I can't sleep when the night come. Oh boy, I give you this my advice. Give him. <laughs> Have you not heard it? Yeah. yeah. Before you know it, that child becomes a young man. Before you know it, that alcohol in the system. It does not happen overnight. And so we as God's people, we've got to be careful. Amen? Amen? God tells us, stay away from it. Amen? Amen. I said God tells us, stay away. away from it. There are some drinks around with very little percentages and some of us still drinking them. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. God says, stay away from it. He told us what we should drink and he told us what we should eat. In Genesis, the beginning, verse 29 and 30, verses 29 and 30 of Genesis 1, God gave Adam and Eve when he created them a diet. Amen? Amen. What was that diet? What was the original diet? And God said, Behold, I have given you everyone who bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in the which is what? The fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have what? Given every green herb for for meat, for food. And it was it was so. So what was God's original you know diet? What did God do there? Fruits and what? Nuts and, and grains. Amen? Fruits and nuts and grains. That what was God's original diet which he gave to Adam 
and Eve before sin. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. God was concerned that they eat right. Mm -hmm. And so he, he specifically told them, I've given you these things to eat. Amen? Amen. Because he was concerned about their body, he was concerned about their health. Amen? He wanted to ensure they would eat right. And so in his original time before sin, there was no flesh. I said there was no flesh in the original diet before sin. It was after sin, in fact it was after the flood that God allowed man to use flesh as food. Amen? Genesis chapter 7, 1 and 2. God came by and allowed man from there on to use flesh as food. After the flood, I you this evening? And the Lord, what, said unto Noah, come thou and all thy house to the ark, for these have I what? See the righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of the beasts that are not clean by to the male and his, his female. So God gave them flesh to eat after the flood. But in order for them to have flesh to eat after the flood, God had to ensure that there was flesh for them to eat after the flood. And so God made sure that they carried into the ark that which was clean and that which was unclean. But before sin, God gave them only what? Nuts and fruits and grains. Before the flood, that was their diet. But God saw what would be their need after the flood. I you this, this evening. He saw their need after the flood. And so he specifically ensured that there would be meat for them to eat after by ensuring that more of the animals that went into the ark were clean animals as against the unclean animals. Amen? Amen. And therefore it tells us immediately that there was always a distinction between clean and unclean. Amen? I repeat, there was always a distinction between clean and unclean as far as that which man should eat. The Bible says that all of God's creation was very good. So everything that God created was very good and still is very good. But God made it clear that everything he created was not good for food. Amen? Amen. And so God comes when he establishes Israel as a nation and he gives them specific instructions as to the clean and the unclean as far as food is concerned and what they should eat and what they should not eat. We don't have time to read all of the passages of scripture, but we'll just read a few and you will go home and check them out. Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11. Verses 1 to 3 and then 7 to 9. Leviticus chapter 11. And we shall just establish the principles. We can't, we can't, we, we, we can't this evening name all the animals and all the birds and, and all the fishes. We are going to establish the principles. Amen? Amen? Once you have the principles, then you know if it falls and meets with the principles, then you know it can be eaten. If it does not, then you know it cannot be eaten. Are you with me this evening? Amen. So let's get, the, let's get the principle there. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children. Read me this evening. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the Beasts which ye shall 
eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever passeth the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts that shall he eat. So, what are the three things we are looking for? One, the animal must be chewing the cud. Two, the animal must be parting the hoof, right? And the tail of the animal must be what? Cloven footed. So God is saying all we have to do is to know that once the animal meets these three, then the animal is clean. If you are lacking any one of the three, then the animal is unclean. Are you with me? So of all the beasts of the fields, the animals must have all three of them to be a clean animal for us to eat. If any is lacking, then the animal is an unclean animal and it's not for us to eat. It is a scavenger placed on the earth as part of God's plan of cleaning up that which needs to be cleaned up on the earth. Cobos do not have around dumps and so on for nothing. They go there because they are what? Scavengers and they feed on that which is dead and decay. That's all. So the principle is chewing the cud, patting the hoof, clothing, footing for the animals and the earth. Okay, let's, 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 let's go on. Let's go on. Uh, we go now into verse 7. And God knows is a little more specific on the what? The swine, the what? He divides the hoof and his what? Proven for the yet. He chewed not the cause he is what? Unclean to you. So what is lacking? That's all. He is not chewing the cut. Right. Of the of, of their flesh shall he not? eat and their carcass shall he not touch. They are unclean to you. Amen? Amen? So anything that comes out of the swine or the pig is unclean. Despite how you chop it up and how you whatever you do with it and what name it's called, it is still unclean. Are you with me? Based on the word of God. I say based on the word of God because we said if it's in the Bible we want it. If it's not in the Bible we don't want it. God is saying that the swine is a scavenger. Amen? And of course again, we don't have to be Bible scholars to see that and know that. Once we grow up around them, we know that. Isn't that so? Isn't that so? Once we grow up around them, we know that. Because we know what they eat. I grew up among them with my grandmother. When I would go to visit her, she had a pig and we had a job, a job to do as children to feed those pigs. And what did we feed them? She would boil the rice and straighten it in a, in a bucket. Right? She would steam the breadfruit and peel it and drop the skin inside there. The dashing black boy drop it inside there. That's all? Yeah. And all them things will mix up and then we go and do what with them. We throw them to the yeah. hmm. So we know in from our own experiences that indeed the pig is a scavenger. God tells us, yes, man, this is why I said we don't have time to name them because if we start to name them, we wouldn't be here tonight. But once we know the principle, amen? Yeah. Then once they do not meet the criteria, we know they are all clean. Amen? Amen? amen. amen. We know they are all clean. Yes. Let's go on. We're going to go right on to verse 9. So, you have verse 9 there? Yeah? Alright. Good. And, uh, right, this one, uh, about verse 9, these shall he eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever heart 
fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall he eat. So God told us what to eat the land, animals and birds, and now he tell us what to eat in the seas. And he's saying, if they don't have fins and scales, then they are what? Unclean. Ah boy. Ah boy. Mm. Be careful now. Be careful now. Start to talk about beak and shark and thing and the mouth start. The enemy, you know, it is strange that these things that God says don't eat. I mean, some of them and they taste. I mean, come on. But God said, they are unclean, amen? I said, God said they are what? Unclean. And so it doesn't matter how they taste, how they look, how they smell. We stay away from them because we are obeying the word of God. Because God knows what is best for our bodies, amen? I don't have time tonight, but those who are giving us our health nuggets, perhaps, and don't, as we continue in these meetings, may tell us some more about the kinds of diseases and so on that these animals carry. God knew why. He told us not to eat them. <laughs> because God wants us to take care of our bodies. Amen? Amen? 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, whatever we do, we should do it to the glory of God. Whether therefore you what? Eat. We will be the light. Whether therefore you eat or what? Or drink or whatsoever we do, we do all to the glory of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. In everything, we seek to bring honor and glory to God. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 And so tonight you must understand that, uh, that, that, that popcorn or popcane or popcorn or whatever he calls himself, however you choose to pronounce it, you know, he was right in a sense in that you cannot always trust man. Listen to the preacher carefully. I'm saying popcorn, popcane, popcorn, whatever, uh, super case. He was right in the sense that you cannot always trust man. Man, but but the preacher has come by here to let you know there is someone who you can always trust. I said there is someone you can always trust because he is trustworthy. There is someone you can make your friend because indeed he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Somebody help the preach tonight. Who am I talking about? Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus tonight. I've come by here to tell you about my friend Jesus tonight. And I'm saying that you can trust him. He is trustworthy. I said he is trustworthy. He's a friend that will stick closer than a brother. You can tell him what troubles you. I'm saying you can tell him what bothers you. Uh, the truth tonight is that Jesus is always on the line and therefore whatever your trouble is you can call him up Jesus is on the main line tonight I said tell him what you want I said tell him what you want tell Jesus tonight what your trouble is tell Jesus tonight what your sorrow is tell Jesus tonight what your need is tell Jesus tonight what your desire is tell Jesus tonight what your joy is
able to say like the songwriter, I come to the garden alone, where the dew is killer of the roses, and the voice I hear, for long my hair, the Son of God discloses, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me, I am his own, and the joy
I said, every night here, we teach you go through a link in the golden chain of salvation. Tonight we are going to another link in the golden chain of salvation. We teach you here every night because we want you to follow Jesus intelligently. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Amen? Yeah. It's not about emotions. We want you to follow Jesus intelligently, amen? Oh, yeah. And so the night again, as I've done before and as I did last night, I'm asking again tonight, let us stand. Let us stand tonight. Stand because you are saying, Jesus, I want to make you my best friend. Are you saying that tonight? Can I see hands saying that tonight? Can I see hands saying, Jesus, I want to make you my best friend? Yes, stand tonight because we are saying we are making Jesus our best friend. And the friends of Jesus will love him. The friends of Jesus will follow him. The friends of Jesus will obey him. You want to say just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me tonight. I want to pray before they sing because after prayer I'm calling somebody. I'm calling somebody. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm never bashful. I'm never ashamed to call people to make decisions for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Sometimes I call and many come to the altar. Sometimes I call and few come to the altar. Sometimes I call and nobody comes to the altar. But that does not deter me because God has sent me here to preach and to call men and women, boys and girls to make decisions for him. Amen? Amen. And I believe tonight that somebody, somebody, even before these meetings got going, you have decided that you are going to be baptized. And so, this is your opportunity. I told you last night, this coming Saturday, we are planning a grand baptism. We begin our first baptism this coming Saturday. And so, we are moving down towards that grand baptism. I see a pool is already up on the outside there. They are getting ready, believing that God's people will make that decision and be baptized. Amen. Amen. I want to pray for you tonight, whoever you are. Whoever you are, pray for you tonight that you will come and join me here because you are saying, Preacher, I'm going to be baptized this coming Saturday. Shall we pray? Loving Father in heaven. Loving Father in heaven, our heads are bowed. We, we thank you for your word. Another link in the golden chain of salvation. You have made it plain to us tonight that we need to have Jesus as our best friend. Lord, speak to your people tonight. Making Jesus the best friend means making that decision to follow him all the way into the water and grave of baptism. Because Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. And so I'm praying for somebody tonight. I don't know if it's a, a young girl, a young man, a young boy, a mother, a father. I don't know, Lord. You know, you brought your people here. I'm praying for somebody tonight to step out boldly and bravely for Jesus and meet me at the altar say, Preacher, I'm standing at the altar because I've made up my mind to go all the way with Jesus in baptism. Strengthen your people and bring even one person here tonight according to your will and your purpose. In Jesus' name. Amen. God is calling now. We take just a few minutes. And I'm calling somebody to come and join me here for prayer. Last night I called and a few came, but I'm calling for new persons tonight. I don't call for the same people every night. I'm calling for new persons tonight. Who will be first tonight? Who will be? Who will come for tonight? I'm calling for new persons tonight. I'm calling for new persons tonight. Last night was last night. Tonight is tonight. I'm calling for new persons tonight.